Hello, my fellow creatives, Anastasia here, Art Marketing Muse. Hope you're having a lovely day amidst all the chaos and the craziness and the panic going on out there. Um, it's such a good and bad time. Good in the sense that there's some real opportunities here and maybe some of us haven't seen it yet. A lot of artists work from home already, so it's not affecting us quite as much. However, it is affecting our bottom line. It's affecting us financially. So this is a rough time. Um, I hear a lot of scared people in the world. We're losing our income. We're losing um, our jobs. And everybody's sort of freaked out. Just know that you're not alone, okay? I would encourage you to unplug for a little while. I would challenge you to do that today. Go unplug, find your favorite podcast, do, I, I saw a lot of the art museums have virtual tours right now. Uh, go work in your studio and create. Just, just unplug from the social media, unplug from the news because as empaths, we take that in, we process it and it can really affect us and our mood. So that's something I would encourage you today to do is just unplug. Um, I wanted to talk about how to diversify your income today, mostly because I'm watching a lot of people panic. Entrepreneurs and artists are the ones that I'm going to focus on. And that being said, my grandpa used to say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, if you drop that basket and they all crack, you're screwed, right? So um, that's sort of what I'm talking about. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. A great example of this, there was a time that artists weren't really able to represent themselves. This is before it got crazy with online and stuff. And in, a lot of artists used galleries to make their income and they sat back and they made art and they shipped it off to the gallery and they did great. But in 2008, when we went into a recession, all those galleries closed and all of a sudden artists weren't making money anymore. So that's what I'm talking about. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You really want to diversify and have multiple streams of income. So I have six things I want to talk to you about ways that you can diversify your income. Okay. Number one, online. If you don't have a website, now would be the perfect time to get one. If you don't know how to go about that, I am going to be offering a free webinar in the next week or two on how to create a website on a budget. If you want to register for that class or free webinar, if you will, um, go to artmarketingmuse.com and register. It's right there on the homepage and you will get all the information coming out for that. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it, exactly how to create a website on a budget. Even if you have a website, I'm going to offer a lot of tips about SEO and things like how you should be labeling your photos to make yourself more searchable and things like that. So even if you have a website, it would be a great learning experience. So go ahead, go to my website, register for that. The reason online is so important right now, you say, oh, but I have a Facebook page. That's awesome. But I woke up this morning and probably... I would say a third of my friends are freaking out because they thought someone flagged them on Facebook um, and it shut down the content they were sharing. And literally one of these articles was cats sitting in chairs. Um, then I went and I found the article uh, that said right now everybody's out of the office. So they're depending on artificial intelligence to check sites and artificial intelligence intelligence has gone crazy and they're canceling everything. So if you're sharing artwork and your people aren't getting to see it, it's not working, right? If Facebook decided to shut down tomorrow for whatever reason, they take all your customers with you. You really need to have your own home base. And right now with this downtime is the perfect time to build that and make that happen. Okay. So um, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have your own site. All right. Number two, galleries and boutiques. So um, there's a lot of good and bad to galleries, all right? So one, they take a huge amount of money. Most will take about 40 to 50% of whatever your price tag is. Um, that sucks. It, it really does. However, at the same time, they're going to sell your work for you if, 
it's popular with their customers. They've got events, they've got customers, they have a customer base, they've got a lot of things going on for them where they can move your artwork. So that's up to you whether that's something you want to do or not. When approaching galleries, don't just start randomly submitting information to a gallery. First, you want to go out and do a little bit of research about that gallery. For example, I know a gallery that only does Southwest artwork, which means my work would not be a fit for them. So I'd be wasting their time and my time by submitting. Second, don't blindly submit. Almost all galleries will tell you how they want their work submitted, whether it's through a particular system, whether it's a certain size of photos, whatever the case may be. So don't just blindly submit because you're not going to get a response. You really need to go through their process, okay? The other thing you could do is boutiques. I have really amped this up this year for myself, and that is I've started approaching local or little art boutiques that I have visited in person and I like what they have. And I've approached the owner and said, you know, I think my stuff would be a really good fit. I think it would sell for you. And most of the time, the positive, I've had really positive feedback. Um, everyone does a little bit different. Some wanted to buy my stuff wholesale, which is fine. Um, some wanted to buy it um, or just put it in their store and do commission. Some places even charge like a small rental fee for wall space and then they sell your work and you get all the money. So there's a lot of different ways to go about that. You can discuss that with the boutiques. What's great about this is in the past two weeks, I received three checks in the mail for nothing that I did. Um, they sold my stuff and then sent me a check and I'm like, great. Um, so it's nice to have that residual income coming in and all I have them selling for me are cards and prints, but my brand is all over it. So if those people wanted to get a hold of me, they can go to my website. Um, so that's another great way to diversify your income. A third one, licensing. So what does licensing mean? Licensing is essentially a business or a corporation renting your artwork from you for a stated period of time to print on their product. Um, for example, if you walk into any home decor store, any rug you see, any clock you see, any um, wall art you see, everything in there that has an image on it will was purchased or rented from an artist for those designs. Um, a local Kansas City artist I know, Benzi Garza, um, he actually has done, he does a lot of licensing and he got on a tissue box. I remember that he's done some rugs and other things too. So hi, Benzi. Um, but I mean, even the tissue boxes have a design and somebody paid him for that. So that's something you could definitely look into. There's tons of resources on the internet. Um, many of you probably don't know right now, I'm in the editing phase of a book for artists all about marketing and business. And I talk about diversifying your income and go more into depth and all these things. So um, I went to the New York licensing expo last year and sat through their university program and I learned so much and it was really enlightening and I went wow how have I not known about this and why am I not doing this so that's definitely another way to get your art out into the world um, and make some residual income on it with little effort on your part Okay, number four, interior designers. So there's tons of interior designers out there and they're looking for artists. They're looking for artwork to put in their homes. Um, ways to find interior designers, Google search. There are lots of home shows that have interior designers. You could go to one and just introduce yourself, try to meet people, see who's decorating, who the designers are, and then contact them and ask them it to either look at your website or see if they have a submittal process again for artists. Um, another one, art consultants. So this is something I went to the um, New York Art Expo last year and I met several art consultants. And what these are, 
usually they have galleries or they have a space or they might work independent and some charge the artist up front, but then they market your work for you. So they have a lot of clienteles like corporations, hotel chains, medical facilities, things like that, that they arrange for art to go into. And art consultants are a great way to find that and to get into that market. Um, and then the last one, if, if these things seem a little bit overwhelming to you, here's a great one I did when I was first starting out. So I moved to a city um, and I didn't know anybody and I was having trouble getting into the art community. And so I decided to host my own group exhibit. So I reached out to a few artists I knew and I asked them to reach out to some artists they knew and I found a venue space that said we could do a group show and we did a group show and it was great because I got to network but I also my work got in front of all these people I'm inviting people each artist is inviting people and so now with a little effort we have an art show and we have our work out in front of everybody so that's six ways that you can diversify your income I will be sharing more updates. If you don't follow me on Facebook, go to Art Marketing Muse and um, find me on Facebook. I do little live updates every day right now just to help with the panic, just to help with all of this. Don't um, forget to go register for the webinar on how to build a website on a budget. But just go create. Breathe. Remember to breathe, stretch, go outside, get some sunshine, um, take some deep breaths, create, do some positive things for yourself to keep yourself in a good mind frame. So on that note, I'm going to go back to painting and you guys have a great day.